Welcome to the Beyond 20 ServiceNow REST API tutorial series. In this video we will cover how to connect to the ServiceNow REST API using Postman and we'll demonstrate how to implement basic authentication for inbound REST API calls. Basic authentication is a relatively older API access standard which utilizes a user record stored in the ServiceNow sys user table to access the API. Postman is a collaboration platform that allows you to set up API integration collections which provide two-way communication testing between both API platforms. Additionally, once you create and test an API call using Postman, you can generate the code for that call in one of several different programming languages with just a few clicks of the mouse. If you would like more information about Postman, see our Beyond 20 videos on using Postman for API testing. I'll put a link to these videos in the comments below, or you can find them in the Beyond 20 LLC channel on YouTube. Well, let's get started by setting up a new user in our ServiceNow instance. And we'll do that. We can. The best way to do that is to just click on the All button and then type sys user dot list. Now, in our case, we've already set one up, so I'm just going to show you how to do that. But in, in your case, you would select New if you hadn't done so already. So we've set up uh, the B20 Test Lab user here. And you don't need a lot of information in here. The critical information that you need is the user ID, which you're going to take with you. Uh, you need to make sure it's set to Active, and you need to make sure that it's set to Web Service Access Only. Also, you'll need to set the password, and once you click on that, it'll allow you to generate a password, and then you can copy that password into your Postman instance, or if you're using a, another API that you're testing this with, you just copy the password into that system. Um, basic Authentication is going to use a Base64 encoding for the password when it's sent, so guard that password carefully when you're working with it. The next thing you need to do is you need to set the roles. Now you won't be able to do this on a, when you first create it until you've submitted the record. Once you've submitted the record the roles tab will show up down here and you just want to click on the roles tab and then click edit. And then you need to select that the the roles that you feel you're going to need. Now here are some of the most basic roles that you'll need for REST API web service user accounts. You may or may not need all of these. Certainly you will probably want to use the import set loader and maybe the import transformer. Uh, ITIL is a good one to have and then these are the ones that you would use that are specific to the API. The REST service, the SOAP, SOAP create, SOAP delete, SOAP query, SOAP query update, and SOAP update. Those are all very important to have if you're working with uh, sending or receiving data to and from ServiceNow from a third-party application. Uh, additional roles obviously can be added over here, but again, uh, if you're using basic authentication, you want to keep the roles as limited as possible because uh, we're not creating the most secure connection when we use basic authentication. Okay, so once you've done your roles, you've got your uh, system set up, it's time to go over to Postman. And if you haven't already done so, you'll need to create a collection. And in that collection is where you can set your authorization to basic. You have a choice in Postman. You can either set it at the collection level or you can set it on the uh, request method or at the request level. So each request can inherit the authentication method of the collection or they can be different. So for this one we want to, uh, we'll, we'll use it here, but right now we're going to just demonstrate it at the method level. Okay, you only need to set up two variables for your basic authentication. You need the uh, ServiceNow instance we have here and your ServiceNow user ID, which we have here. The next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to, uh, if you haven't, if you're working with a new collection, you'll need to just right click on the three dots and then select add request. And for our test, we're just going to use a get table uh, call, which has uh, a git as the uh, method. Uh, we have our endpoints, our, the ServiceNow instance is the variable that we're going to use in our URL. 
and then we're calling the table API and we're getting the incident. Okay. Over here we have uh, decided to use method override for the authentication. So we set that to basic auth. It asks us for our user name. Now, in this case, we could have done this. We could have put in the uh, a variable for that, but it's okay to just type it in directly. And then the password goes in right here, and it is password. It is encrypted. So, uh, and it's going to be um, base64 encoded when it's sent, so you won't see the real password at all in here. All right. We'll go ahead and send this. We have a status OK of 200, and then we have our results set here. Okay, because we just sent this request as without any filters in it, so it's just a, it's not even an ad hoc search, it's just get the incident. What it does is it gives you back like the top 20 or top 200 results in that table. And also notice that it's not normalized down to the level of resolving the reference fields. So the reference fields are all listed in here as links. So when you want to use this data, you would then have to make additional calls to, to resolve those if you didn't know what these uh, sys IDs are for these variable or for the various uh, reference fields. Well, I hope this video has been informative for you. Please uh, subscribe to our Beyond 20 LLC channel on YouTube to view more videos on ServiceNow, ITIL, and other ITSM solutions provided by Beyond 20 or visit our website at www.beyond20.com to learn how Beyond 20 can assist your company with ITSM training and consulting, as well as ServiceNow development and administration.